Welcome, beautiful, beloved beings. I have a little story for you today about some of my pets. Now, I want to start with the pet that was my heart dog. A little Mexican hairless, or shallow as quaintly, the miniature size, um, named Pepper. We found him at a rescue while we were looking online, and his little picture popped up. And so here was this sassy little thing with his tongue sticking out one side of his mouth. And we inquired about him. Uh, my partner is very allergic and I have developed allergies to animals and their dander. That hasn't stopped me from having them. But he had never had a dog. So we thought maybe this um, little guy who had no fur would be okay for his allergies because he had a much uh, bigger problem than I did at the time. So we found um, this little guy and I inquired about him and the lady that ran the rescue decided she liked us okay and that we wanted to meet in person. So we drive to the place which is around 100 miles from where we lived and she has this big ranch where she has this rescue where she has uh, she rescues all kinds of animals so she has dogs cats um, horses mules whatever animal is in need she will care for it if necessary for the rest of its life if it's not adoptable if for some reason the trauma is so great or the health problems are so great that she cannot place the uh, pet with someone, then she will um, care for that pet for the rest of its life. And that goes for even feral dogs and cats, that she has places for them on her ranch uh, so that they're safe and well-fed and sheltered. So we get there, and she comes, uh, I let her know that we're there, and she comes driving up on her golf cart, because it's quite a large property, and meets us, and I go with her to where she's housing this little guy at, and we find him, and he's um, got a really big attitude for such a little guy. And I, uh, she wraps him up in a blanket and hands him to me, and we go back to my car. And so I then hand him to my partner to see if he's going to have an allergic reaction to this little dog. And he doesn't. He has, um, he's fine. And so I make the transaction with the lady, and she gets back in her golf cart and goes back to the big house, and we leave with our little guy, and we aren't prepared. So we go directly to several pet stores <laughs> with him and begin to see a little bit of his personality. And he is, he was rescued from a puppy mill where they were getting ready to dispose of him because he had his back legs were atrophied, his whole hind quarters were atrophied and he had very hard time walking and in fact he walked on his front two legs for a while until uh, he started to gain some strength and some weight um, he weighed half of what he should weigh he, he was just in very bad condition and they were going to do what puppy mills do and dispose of him Someone came along and rescued him, but she couldn't keep him because he was a show Lois Quaintly, very primitive, very dominant personality, and he did not get along with her um, dogs and cats that she had. So um, he ended up at this rescue where we found him. And 
So we took him and got him everything he needed for us to start with. And uh, so we started to see some of his personality, some of the things he was afraid of. And we knew that he was going to take a lot of care because he had been so badly mistreated and that he was going to need medical care and all of that. So, so we get him home and um, he starts to gain weight and gain some health. Took uh, After we'd had him for a year, we discovered he had some bone disease in one of his hips and so he had some surgery and had some bone removed. Because he was so small, it wasn't necessary to replace his hip, but he was, um, um, that it was preventing him from gaining more strength, this necrotic bone tissue he had. So he had that surgery. And we took him home from the surgery, and he felt that he had this cone on his head, you know, the cone of shame. <laughs> and he was so smart that I could, he couldn't, he wasn't strong enough to hold his head up with the cone on. So I took it off, and he started to go for his stitches. And I said, if you chew your stitches, I have to put that thing back on your head. And he never tried to chew on his stitches again. So, like I said, he was very smart, very primitive, very dominant, defiant personality. He was a little character. Um, there were some things he never outgrew. He was always terrified of um, crates and cages. He was always terrified of metallic sounds. There were things that he just never was able to overcome. But we made sure that he didn't encounter those things uh, as to the best of our ability. And he thrived and was happy. And as I said, dominant and grumpy and defiant because he had pain. He was not, he had musculature problems, skeletal problems. He was just uh, poorly bred, but that didn't stop him from being this amazing little dog. And so he was with me for 12 years. Uh, during the time that he, we were first um, training him and, and helping him to understand what was expected of him and all of that kind of thing, I taught him to touch with his nose if he needed something. And it was a little thing. You know, I, I taught him basic commands. He didn't really need training because he kind of easily understood what I was asking of him and did it if he was a mind to. <laughs> so, uh, as I said, he was quite defiant. So the years passed and I had him with me for about a dozen years, for about 12 years. And he was this just my little companion. He was, he went with me everywhere. He was with me every minute of the day. He was my companion. Um, and uh, there came a time that he gave up and he laid down and he wouldn't get up and he wouldn't eat. And so I um, did everything I could think of, mundane and otherwise. And I sang to him constantly. I sang him a specific song um, that uh, is called uh, Never Let You Go. And it, part of the lyrics are, I will never let you go. And so after a few days of this, I said to him, do you want to go? And he knew that that meant go in the car and go for a ride. And he raised his head up and lifted his ears up. And so I said it again, do you want to go? And he did. He stood up. So I took him, I wrapped him up in a blanket, and I took him and put him next to me in the car. 
and we drove to a place that had chicken and I ordered a piece of chicken for him and took him home and fed him the chicken. And after that, he gained strength and came back and um, was with me an additional two years until his little body finally gave out. So I lost him. And uh, after a couple of months, I started to look for a new baby. And I connected with someone who helped me locate a Chinese crested dog. You know, this dog was old and not in good health, but um, I loved him anyway. <laughs> and so I followed him um, from the uh, the local humane society or, or the pound, wherever he was at, uh, they had already made arrangements for him to go to a Chinese, Chinese crested rescue. So I followed him there and I bugged that lady <laughs> until she uh, uh, let me have him. I, you know, I went through the whole process, you know, the whole adoption process and and you know, it was in contact with her constantly. And finally, he was healthy enough and ready for me to um, come and get him. And once again, he was um, he was in Houston, and I live in lived in Dallas at the time. And so it was um, that we had to travel to go and get him. And I brought him home, and he was an old guy, and he didn't. He was sicker than I, than anyone knew, um, but uh, I was able to figure out how to care for him, and I had him with me for about a year and a half until his old heart just gave out. After I'd had him for a few weeks, he started to touch <laughs> with his nose my leg or my hand if he needed something or wanted something. And I thought that was very curious because I hadn't taught him to do that. So time passed and we lost him too. Uh, during the time that I had him, I found a cat that I wanted to bring home. And um, when I saw this cat, I knew he was supposed to be my cat. And I contacted the rescue he was with, and he had quite a story as well. He'd had um, some uh, infection as a tiny kitten. He was found when he was a couple of weeks old, and he had a upper respiratory infection and eye infections and lost one eye right away. And then um, they were able to save the other eye, but he... Uh, it's damaged. He can't see. He doesn't have full sight out of it. Uh, but this little kitten was hand raised and was with the uh, the home where he was raised for very close to a year. And so he was hand raised around lots of cats and some dogs. And I thought he was he would be the perfect addition to my pet family. And he, right away, he loved Jack. Jack was a little worried about him, even though he really wanted a cat the whole time. <laughs> he thought he wanted, a cat. he wanted to have a cat around. So they did make up a little bit, and he, um, uh, this cat, Willie, stayed with him and cuddled with him and was with him. Uh, as he got sicker. And after we'd had Willie for a few weeks, maybe just a couple of weeks, he started to touch me on my leg or my hand if he wanted something. <laughs> and I had not taught him to do this. And the lady that raised him had not taught him to do that. So now I have two pets that have learned to do this that I did not teach. 
so after Jack left us, I was I really wanted another dog fairly soon, and I started to look and was directed by my guides to this particular dog um, that is Monkey. Uh, he was named Grant at the rescue he was at. He, someone had seen him be tossed out of a window, a car window that was going down the street and had uh, rescued him and taken him to the local SPCA. And they had placed him with this, um, this rescue. And he was some distance away. So I contacted these people and I, you know, told them my story and went through the process and they called me and um, on the phone call she said, well, um, I'd really like for you to meet Grant. And I said, well, you're a little bit far away from me. I can't come right away. I can, on the weekend, or maybe next weekend, come to see him. And she said, well, why don't I just bring him to you today? <laughs> this lady is 75 miles away. And I said, okay. So I made arrangements to get um, uh, the funding for him because he had been fostered for quite a while and they had um, uh, their price for fostering and caring for the needs, you know, because he had been, um, had had his vaccinations, he'd had his checkups, and been to the veterinarian for some minor things. And so, as all rescues do, they have their, um, um, the fee they ask as a supplement to caring for uh, the pet. And so I made arrangements and um, she sure enough showed up exactly when she said she would that afternoon. And she, you know, did the home visit, looked at my apartment and uh, my cat and um, saw that I was, I knew how to care for a dog. And she said, well, I'll just leave him with you and I'll send you the paperwork by email tomorrow. And that's what she did. <laughs> she was in my home for about 10 minutes and I had monkey. And after a couple of weeks, just like clockwork, Without me teaching him, he started to touch me on with his nose on my hand or my leg when he wanted something. Now, by this time, I know that my old dog, Pepper, and my other old dog, Jack, are still around me. And I came to the realization that Pepper was teaching every pet after him how to do that. And it's too much of a coincidence. Once, maybe. Three times, that's not a coincidence. There's something going on. So my beloved, beautiful beings, what I want you to know is every little thing you do matters. Every little thing you do comes back. Whatever you give, you get back. Even if it's teaching a needy little dog a trick to help you understand when they need or want something, it comes back every time. Don't think that anything you do, especially in service of someone or some other being, is ever unnoticed. Everything you do will come back no matter how small. It will come back. 
So, I wanted to talk to my guides about it this morning. And I wanted to, from the Santa Muerta deck, which is the deck I use often when I'm doing mediumship work, because the imagery is a little more descriptive when those that we call to on the other side um, have something to say uh, and the pictures really do matter. So I'm asking, what's this so? Did Pepper help me in that way and help these other pets in that way? And what can we learn from it? And so, Well, <laughs> okay, that's directly from Pepper. Well, the first card I get is the Six of Swords going on to calmer waters, but also learning about it. See that book? It's not just only gliding in a boat. Maybe there's some education involved. Maybe there's some history involved. The King of Cups was the next card. All that emotion. All that water. He takes it in, but he knows what to do with it. He knows how to use it. Lastly, I got the tower. Sometimes those foundations need to be shaken so that thing, something else can be rebuilt. So the foundations of all these pets were shaken. And then they came to me and I helped them rebuild something. And then the Four of Pentacles. That's directly from Pepper because that's the card about hanging on to what you have, about miserly hanging on to it. It's mine. I'm not giving it up. That's directly from Pepper because I'll never let you go. <laughs> and she's not letting go of that little figure. You notice she's in a wedding dress, and the figure is probably her groom, and she's really got a tight grip on him. <laughs> so, that's the message from Pep. But let's see, what do we learn from it? What is the lesson? What do we take away? What can we continue to learn from such an experience? Um, this is the Sacred Medicine Oracle Deck by Asia Frost. And I hope I'm saying her name right. The first uh, card is Seer Prophecy. So, I knew all along. I understood where that behavior came from. The next card is the soul retrieval. Wholeness. Because of it is the wholeness of the soul and the interaction of the souls together. It's part of the soul retrieval. The full spirit moon, shine. Shine. Give of yourself 
without thought or concern that it would come back to you or looking for any sort of payment in any way. Just shine. Just be you. Give the world part of yourself so that it can be reflected back to you. All of that, all of those seeds you plant, all of that intention you put into everything you do, no matter how small, it will all grow and come back to you. So, my beloved beings, that's what I learned from the small thing of teaching my little dog a way to let me know that he needed something. Until next time, my beautiful beings. <laughs>